Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Latchkey Friends podcast. Thanks for everybody that tune in, who's tuning in, who's hung out with us. Make sure you watch some of the past episodes. We've got lots of funny stuff on there. Liz, it is fantastic to see you. Hello. And we've also got our, friend, it's we've got our friend Lindsay with us today. We do. We have our friend Lindsay Wilcox. Lindsay used to work with us. L Lindsay, how are you? I'm great. How are you guys? I'd say pretty pretty fantastic, pretty coronavirus quarantine fantastic. Well, I spent Life's... my morning at Costco, so I'm not feeling so fantastic, but things uh, are looking up now. How, are, how was the toilet paper situation? Gone. Still gone. Uh, but I'm good. I don't need toilet paper. <laughs> I'm just going to let things like air dry. I'll be fine. <laughs> Should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Or just yeah. hop in the shower. It's fine. Get a bidet. Every time, need it. Every time you go, you've got a shower. A <laughs> shower. I mean, it's so, right there. I guess you just hop in. Why just go? Right. I'm like the cleanest person. So for me, like um, quarantine, everybody's trying to figure out how to be in their houses and not go crazy. And you kind of have to be able to find something that you like. Yeah. For me, the most peaceful place in the entire world is. The bathtub. Bathtub's and the best. And you tubbies forever. You I have always. Ever since I've known you. It's always, I, like you're always talking about tubbies. I've always loved the bathtub. Um, when we moved into our new house, like that was the number one requirement is we could finally have a big tub. And then added bonus, there was a hot tub in our backyard. That people just left behind. Um, I tried to become a guy who knew how to figure out how to use a hot tub. And then we always came out like, weird colors and smelling weird. So I've kind of given up on the hot tub. The regular tub is still, still fantastic. Is your hot tub working at all or have you emptied it? I've emptied it right now. Maybe if we get desperate here through this thing, I'm gonna put it back on. But right now it's just the, the bathroom bathtub. That's where I watch my Dutch soap operas and, and have a good cry. Always nice. Lindsay. So, yeah. That reminds yes. me that you had a hot tub growing up. It was a very unique hot tub. So Lindsay, where did you grow up? You're not a Utahan. I am not a Utahan. I am an Idahoan. So I grew up in a small town about 15 minutes north of Rexburg. Most people know where Rexburg is because of BYU Idaho or they see it on their way to Yellowstone. So I grew up in a small town called St. Anthony. Very nice. Is St. Anthony like Preston, Idaho? Are we thinking Napoleon Dynamite here? How's it? What little town? It's smaller than Preston, actually. But fun fact, it has a Big J's just like, um, just like Preston does when they go to Big J's and they get that shake. We had a Big J's. They were owned by the same people. Um, wow. And it's still there. That's where I got my pizza bombs, which is another word for a calzone. I don't know why it's called. A <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they were called pizza bombs. Well, they are in St. Anthony, that's what they call them, but it's a calzone. Do you watch Napoleon Dynamite and think, yep, that's how I grew up? I watch Napoleon Dynamite and I think I'm A, embarrassed that people think this is funny because <laughs> Ooh. it's not funny to me, or at least it wasn't funny the first time I saw it, especially the part where the guy shoots the cow while the kids are on the bus. I laughed really hard at that. <laughs> I, oh, the second time I watched it, I laughed really hard. But the first time I watched it, I went, this is making fun of my life. This is <laughs> and, and now I watch it and I'm like, okay, I can laugh about this. This is okay. But at the time, it was not funny. You maybe me. had a little PTSD. Happening. Yeah, that's a good way to describe that. Yeah. A little too real. A little too yeah. close to home. So in, in St. Anthony, Idaho, you were living the sweet life where you had a hot tub. And I'd love to hear more about your hot tub. So we had a hot tub and our house was built in the late seventies, which is not when people normally put hot tubs in their house. And I feel like the seventies was like prime time for hot tubs. <laughs> I feel like that's the waterbed <laughs> hot tub sauna era. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess maybe because no one else that I knew had a hot tub in their house. Yeah. I feel like this was super common. Um, so 
to give you an idea, this house was built in 1978 and it had brown, almost shag carpet. And you would walk into the hot tub room and because the man that built the house didn't really know what he was doing, he put, he dig a, dug a hole in the crown under the, the house and put in this bright blue, probably like a cobalt blue hot tub, just a round hot tub. It was a six seater hot tub, it had the little jets that came out. And then he put slats over the top of it, but he didn't actually seal it or put any concrete down. It was just the dirt. Sitting in the dirt hole. The, the hot tub and then some slats, like a sauna, a sauna, yeah. Oh, if it was a really redneck sauna from the 1950s, maybe. <laughs> and so when we bought the house, it was already old and the hot tub didn't work especially well, but we were going to use that because that was the charm of this house. And so <laughs> whenever we wanted to use the hot tub, we would have to, so as Spencer said, if you don't do a hot tub properly, you can get sores, you can turn colors. Um, one time I got boils because we didn't have enough chemicals in and I went to gym class and immediately ripped my shirt off and put on my gym clothes so nobody would see my boils. And so, in other words, you really need to know what you're doing when you have a hot tub. And so it was this big process where my dad would pull out this bucket of chemicals and it took hours to fill up this hot tub because he would have to keep testing the chlorine and make sure that there was enough chlorine and it smelled like an aquarium or a giant swimming pool in our house whenever the hot tub was going. So because it was so much work, he started just leaving the water in the hot tub. And because they hadn't finished the ground around the hot tub, Idaho is prime hobo spider territory. And pause, so pause, pause. Explain <laughs> to us what a hobo spider is. <laughs> so it's a brown spider it's poisonous when it bites you and it's probably i would say the biggest ones can be three centimeters um that's big it's just Ugh. a big brown spider and as i mentioned before we had brown almost shag carpet and so oh, <laughs> you didn't know that the hobo spiders were there until it was oh, all man you so um, these spiders would just come out of the dirt under the house and rather than make it into the house, usually they would fall into the water of the hot tub. And so my dad, whenever we wanted to get into the hot tub, we had this big wooden cover over the top of it and it had two pieces and he would lift one piece and then lift the other piece and stack them up against the wall and then we would save these five gallon ice cream buckets, the ones like the FARS buckets with the handles. Yeah. And he would start draining it and we would take the ice cream buckets and scoop the water out and scoop all the spiders out and wash them down the drain in the shower right next to the hot tub because it was also, there was a toilet and a shower right next to it. Liz doesn't need to use the toilet. The toilet. She says next to the hot tub. <laughs> it was that you didn't need toilet paper. It it did have toilet paper. Yeah, that's true. My parents could just walk downstairs, dip in the hot tub with they run out of toilet paper, and then yeah. pull a few spiders off, and they'd be fine. How many spiders are we talking that you would have to scoop out? Oh, I'd say at least thirty. Oh. <laughs> So, okay. Do you just, like hot tubs now? No, no, of course not. I uh, I will go to our rec center and I'll sit in the hot tub for a minute. But usually if about five people are in the hot tub, I get out of the hot tub because I don't know where they've been and I want to be in my own juice <laughs> hot tub and then I will just hop out. What's your take on hobo spiders these days? I feel really glad that I now live in Utah and no one seems to know what that is. 
And the other thing that surprises people when I say hobo spiders, they think of homeless people. So like hobos. So if I say there were hobos in my hot tub, people think, <laughs> you know, so there were often 30 homeless people in my hot tub. Exactly. It gets a little bit confusing, but, but now I don't have to deal with those. I don't think I've seen a hobo spider since I lived here. So that's one thing I definitely don't miss about Idaho. Do your parents still use the hot tub? I don't think they have used it in years, probably yeah. 15 years. I bet there's a lot of hobo spiders in there. I guarantee there are a lot of hobo spiders in there. Ugh. Yuck. Well. Spencer, well. you want to go up to Idaho and take a tubby? How far is it from Salt Lake? It's only four hours. You can make it right. So if I drive four hours to your parents' house, I can go downstairs, across the dirt floor, pick up well, some... Not a it's not a dirt floor. It's covered by sauna slats, but there's dirt right under the sauna slat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I can, you I can walk across the slats that are right above the earth. Yes. I can. I can release, remove some of those slats. Just get the big jug of of spiders out of there. Warm up the water. Take it a, a dip in there, and then and then shower off, and then and then go on my way. Yep. Yes, I'm sold. Do your parents <laughs> do your parents rent out the place? No. <laughs> do they Airbnb the hot tub? No, I'm quite sure it's not up to code. So. Oh. Well, this has been fantastic, Liz. <laughs> any follow up questions from you? I I don't have any other follow up questions. No, I'm good. I feel like I, I have a really good image of, of Lindsay's hot tub experience growing up. Okay, well, if anybody has any spider problems in your home, Lindsay's not afraid, just give her a call. Um, you, can, uh, you can follow her on her website, newlysharpenedpencils.com. Yes. Where there are, no, as of yet, no stories about the hobo spiders, but I'm sure there could be soon. I, yeah, of course, I can <laughs> tell the story in my own words on that website at some point and I may even have pictures of the hot tub. Well oh, share man. them on there and if you have any pictures of the hot tub share them with us so that all of our followers can see it on at latchkey friends on all of the social media channels or latchkeyfriends.com. Lindsay Wilcox you're pretty much the best. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks so much for being with us Liz thanks for hosting and we will have another show for you guys soon. Thanks everybody.